Welcome to the live service from Family Worship Center. This service is also being broadcast live on Sun Life Radio, online worldwide at sunlifetv.com, and on the free SBN app. We'll have praise and worship from the Family Worship Center singers and musicians, a time for prayer, plus the anointed preaching from God's Word. Now let's go live to the Family Worship Center Sanctuary as this service begins.
Hallelujah. Are you happy to be in the house of the Lord this morning? Come on now. We're here to worship. We're here to glorify. We're here to lift up the only name that matters. There is no other name like the name of Jesus. For in that name, there is salvation. In that name, there is healing. In that name, there is deliverance. In that name, there is victory. In that name, there is joy. And in that name is peace that passes all understanding. Give the Lord one more hand clap of praise. Turn around and greet somebody and welcome them into the service. And those of you joining us by Sun Life Broadcasting Network, we're so glad to have you tuning in. Television, radio, internet, wherever in the world that you are, we're so glad for you to be with us. We want to be in prayer for many of our church people that are out on vacation this week and bring them back safely. And we had a great meeting in Las Vegas, Nevada. I mean, Friday night, it was fantastic. And I want to say this. I want to commend our singers and musicians. It was the best that they've ever done. I mean, they were right on the money. But there was a spirit of expectancy in that meeting. We had many respond for salvation and we give the Lord the praise and glory. The only problem was Debbie and I didn't get back until midnight last night. And I wish I was still in bed asleep. So if I'm not off during the message, I'm in the spirit. <laughs> on the Lord's day. But uh, it's good to be on. But we had a great, great time. Uh, if you enjoy 105 degrees... And, uh, but it was fun. We had a great time, and we appreciate all those. And we had them from not only Nevada, the Las Vegas area, but Utah, Arizona, Southern California. We even had a brother fly in from Winnipeg, Canada to be in the services, and Alaska that came over. I mean, it was tremendous. We thank the Lord for, for the moving of the Spirit. share begins Thursday, August the 11th, and we need all of our phone volunteers beginning at 5 a.m. and then uh, through 11 p.m. when the last shift is over. Of course, Tuesday night, as always, is the busiest shift, and so we need the most operators then. And then uh, World Van Evangelism Bible College classes begin on August the 24th, so we want to be praying for a great semester at the Bible College. And we need some phone operators for Sunday mornings. We need a volunteers who can answer phones here at the church during the Sunday morning service from 915 to 1115. And if you would like to help and volunteer, the phone bank is right up there on my right. Go back to the Octagon, and they will be happy to give you more information. Tomorrow... School starts. I can't believe it. I, I can remember we started school on after Labor Day. But it's getting earlier and earlier and earlier. But school starts tomorrow. And we're so glad this morning to have all of our teachers of Family Christian Academy joining us this morning. And I want all of them to step up here. We want to pray over them today. As they come, we want to ask the Lord to anoint them and to give them the best year. Listen, as a parent who has raised three children, who has eight grandchildren, there is no way I would ever put my child in a public school because they're no longer places of education. They are government indoctrination centers, teaching them lies, teaching them half-truths, and when you can put your child in a school where the Word of God is the foundation of learning. Now, did you hear what I said? Where the Word of God is the foundation of learning. And we are so grateful. The, you know, I've had all three of my kids, Debbie and I, graduated from FCA, and now we have grandkids there. That's amazing. And we think we've got one of the best private schools in town. And we thank each and every one of our teachers 
And uh, y'all can come on up. I won't bite. You can come on over and make another row. I promise. I haven't bitten anyone in two days. I promise you. And uh, boy, don't we have a great looking group. Man, we have a great looking group of teachers here. I need to go back to school. No. The last thing I want to do is go back to a classroom. But we're so thankful for each and every one of you for your commitment to teach our children. You're more than a teacher. You are a minister in that classroom. You set an example. You set the tone by uplifting the Lord Jesus Christ. And we want you to know that we stand behind you. Our prayers are with you. And we want you to know that when you walk into that classroom, you're not by yourself. There's God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And the most important thing not only is bringing education to your, to your students, but to let them see Christ live in you, to point them the way to Calvary. Would all of you stand and stretch your hands? toward these as we pray for God's blessing and graciousness and anointing upon them. Father, we come before you in the name of your son, Jesus. What a privilege it is to minister to young people. And Lord, we're asking this morning that your hand of favor, that the hand of anointing, the hand of guidance and wisdom would rest upon each and every one of these teachers. Lord, let every classroom be turned into a prayer room. Let the glory of the Lord fill the house. Let those that are coming in as students that don't have a background in the Word of God in church, let them receive you. Let them see Christ in each and every one of these teachers. And Lord, we're asking for the best year in Family Christian Academy's history. And we give you all the praise and all the glory. And everybody said amen and amen. Let's give them a hand. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for your love of children. You can go back to your seats now. Praise the Lord. This morning, we want to welcome uh, 58 brand new media church members. I thought everybody I asked in Las Vegas, how many media members did we have? I think 75% of the audience raised their hand. And this morning, we want to welcome from Alabama, Betty, Edward, William, Arkansas, Vanita, California, Diana, Harvey, Jean, Jim, Mary, Paula, Tammy, Connecticut, Kathleen, Peter, Georgia, Annie, Illinois, Isabel. From Louisiana, April, Barbara and Robert. From Maryland, Gary, Nancy, and Warren. From Massachusetts, Anthony and Stephen. From Mississippi, John, from Nevada, Larry, from New Jersey, Arthur and, Arthur and Carol, from North Carolina, Carolyn, Lori, Paul, Stephen, Ursula, Wilda, and Zachary. And from Ohio, Elon, from Oklahoma, Eldon, Opal, from Oregon, Shirley, from Pennsylvania, Dennis, Edna, Linda, Lopez, Marilyn, Sandra, from Tennessee, Pauline, uh, from Texas, Sherelle, Jack, Janice, Jean, Sandra, from Washington, Pansy, West Virginia, Thomas, uh, from Canada, Jamie, Jeremiah, from New uh, Zealand, Panna, from South Africa, Lucanzo, and Tanya, from the United Kingdom, Maria. And let's stand, Family Worship Center, and let's give all of these new media church members a great big welcome to Family Worship Center. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, happy birthday, to you one more time now, happy birthday, happy birthday, to you, to you, happy birthday, happy birthday, 
tell you how old she is. I want to live to another day. Well, I started to say she's been having her 28th birthday for the last number. Hey, a woman can be any age she wants to be. It's none of our business, all right? Amen. Don't forget tonight at 6 o'clock, another great service. Family Worship Center, Resurrection Choir, and singers.
Father's oar. Well, I'll fly away. Well, to that home on God's celestial shore. Well, I'll fly away. One more time. Some glad morning when this life is over. I won't fly away to that home on God's celestial shore. Well, I won't fly away. Give me some fast fours. Hallelujah. Somebody say amen. Somebody say praise the Lord. I fly away, oh glory. I fly away. When I die, hallelujah, I fly away. Well, I fly away. a few more happy days and then well I oh fly away where are you going to a land where joys will never never end hallelujah oh well I One more time. When this life is over, one day it will be. Well, I oh, fly away to a home on God's celestial shore. He said the streets are paved with gold. He said the walls are of jasper. He said the gates are of pearl. He said, there's no crying there, no weeping there, no sorrow there, no sin there, no shame there, no heartache, no war, no fighting there. Glory to God. But the thing that's going to be greater than all of that I've just mentioned is Jesus Christ will be there. Well, I fly, fly away. Thank God we're alive.
We're starting to have church around here. Glory to God. Just a few more. Happy days in this. Ah, fly away. Going to a land. Tickets already bought and paid for. Where joys will never end. Ah. sing like you're saved. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. You may be seated. If you need prayer, I want you to come, please, because we still believe the Lord heals the sick. We believe he's able to do all things. He still delivers. He still sets the captive free. Jesus is sweetest name I know. And he's just over Precious Lord, Heavenly Father, I pray for every one of these people who stand here today, all of those by television, by satellite, by the internet, by radio, wherever in the world they may be, 
I'm asking for healing. You said, I am the Lord who healeth thee. <laughs> Hallelujah. You said, I'll put none of these diseases on you that I put on the Egyptians. And Lord, I'm asking for your mighty power to set the captive free right now. Not only to heal, but to deliver. We ask it in the mighty and holy name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Praise God. You may go back to your chairs and thank you so very, very much. Praise the Lord. What we're going to do today is very important. We call it the Lord's Supper. And there's only one requirement. I say one, really two, that the Lord demands of his people to take this. And that is, first of all, that you be born again. Remember that. If you're not born again, don't take this. Second, that your faith be exclusively in Christ and what he did for us at the cross and in nothing else, understand that. Your faith exclusively in Christ. I love this church, but it didn't die on the cross to save you. All of our good works did not save us. Faith in him and what he did at Calvary's cross is what has saved us. Donnie, would you read, please? For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, Praise the same you. night in which he was betrayed, yes. took bread. Yes, Jesus. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Praise Take, God. eat. This is my body which is broken for you. Praise God. This do in remembrance of me. Would you hold it up, crush it between your fingers, symbolizing his broken body, and take it now, please. After the same manner also, he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. Yes, Lord, yes. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. Praise For as God. often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he comes. Would you hold up the cup symbolic of his shed blood, and would you take it? Praise God. Where the healing waters flow, where the joy celestial flow, where there's peace and rest and love, where the healing waters flow. I want to say what, really what Donnie said a few minutes ago about our academy. I thank God for the teachers and those who are in positions of leadership in the school. And um, I've got three little great granddaughters. The smallest and youngest is two and a half years old. And every time she sees me, she says, Papa, I'm tartan to coo. It's daycare, but to her, it's, it's school, it's cool. <laughs> and and uh, she's got everything ready to go, her lunchbox and everything. Now, I hope she doesn't get in a fight because I know her. <laughs> her. The first word she learned to speak was mine. Mine, whatever it is, it's mine. <laughs> the sin nature <laughs> at work. So, uh, but I, I believe our school is going to once again grow until it is the largest or one of the largest in the city of Baton Rouge. <laughs> praise God. Academically and above all, spiritually, praise the Lord. Brian, are you ready to sing? I was 
loves more like you. I could change the way I live. I'd be so slow to anger. And a little quicker to forgive. I'd never worry about tomorrow, no. I'd be more thankful for today. And I'd find joy among the sorrow. Let it carry me away And if I was less like me I'd find my strength in loving you Loving you I'd be as mighty as a river Gentle as the morning do, and I would walk into the fire. Oh, my feet are made of clay, and find the path. carry me away Carry me, let it carry me away. Praise God, praise God. Oh, Lord, Sing that last verse one more time, please, Brian. Lord, if I was less like me, I'd find my strength in loving you. I'd be as mighty as a river. Oh, yes, Lord. And as gentle as the morning.
Lord, I cling, cling to my salvation. Cling to my salvation. And let it carry me. Lord, let it carry me away. God, hallelujah. I would cling to my salvation and let it carry me away. Thank you, Brian. My, my, the words to that song. If I was less like me, Lord, and more like you. Let's receive the tithe and the offerings this morning for the church, and thank you for your giving, for your grace, for your generosity to the work of God. And as Donnie also stated, we'll need all the help we can get on the phones starting Thursday morning at 5 a.m. Jim Wolves and I will kick it off Thursday and Friday and Monday and Tuesday. And be praying about it. It's extremely, extremely important. I can't tell you where it is. They won't let me. But in just a few days, we'll go on another System. It's not in this country. It's in another country. Three million homes. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, thank you for your people. Thank you, Lord, for their concern for your work, their love for you. I would pray that you would bless them abundantly so. And I ask it all in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Could you come, please? Well, Jesus got a hold of my life, and he won't let me go. There's a song written not so long ago. I think it's the testimony of every born-again believer. This is what it says.
when I need him know where to find him in my place of prayer spirit hovers near his voice gently gives me my direction and I'll follow that voice that I hear his voice, His voice makes the difference when He speaks. He relieves my troubled mind. It's the only voice I hear that makes the difference, and I'll fall. His voice is a strong, mighty tower, tearing down every stronghold in my life. He's the master of the wind, storm that rages. When he speaks, all my darkness turns to night. I have heard other voices speaking to me to deceive and lead me astray. But my shepherd's voice is different than all others. I'm his sheep and I know my His voice, His voice makes the difference. When He speaks, He relieves my troubled mind. It's the only voice I hear that makes the difference. And I'll fall. It's the only voice I hear makes the difference, and I'll follow one day at a time. One more time, please. His voice makes the difference when he speaks. He relieves my troubled mind. It's the only voice I hear that makes the difference. And I'll follow one at a time. And I'll follow. And I'll follow one day at a time. And I'll follow one day at a time.
There's not a single problem in life that one word from the master cannot solve. Can you imagine when the disciples heard that voice say, follow me and I'll make you fishers of men. Can you imagine when that man with the lame hand in the temple that day and he heard that voice said, stretch forth thine hand. Can you imagine when that leper came to him and said, if you can, you can heal me. And he heard that voice say, I will be thou clean. Can you imagine that day when Martha heard that voice say, Martha, I am the resurrection and I am the life. Hallelujah. His voice makes the difference. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's many voices in the world today, but there's only one voice that makes the difference. Now, did you hear me? It's not the voice of Buddha. It's not the voice of Muhammad. It's not the voice of Allah. It's the voice of Jesus Christ, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Open your Bibles this morning to Mark chapter 11. I'm, I, I started this message about a month ago, and I never got out of the illustration of the rain barrels. So if you were not here, you'll have to buy the tape or the CD, whatever we're selling. Mark chapter 11, beginning in verse 22. The word of the Lord said, And Jesus answering said unto them, Have faith in God. For verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe those things which he saith shall come to pass, and he shall have whatsoever he saith. Therefore I say unto you what things soever you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them, and you shall have them. And I want to minister for a few minutes this morning on the subject, have faith in God. Have faith in God. Would you bow your heads? Father, we come before you in the name of your son, Jesus. We thank you for your voice that makes the difference. We thank you for the Holy Spirit that we sense in our midst this morning. I ask for your anointing to minister and the same anointing to rest upon the people that they may receive this word. Take this word to their heart. Help faith to grow into their heart, to believe you for the impossible. And we give you all the praise and all the glory. And everybody said amen and amen. A couple of years ago, I was preaching in Wichita, Kansas. It was a church, Berean Assembly, that was actually started out of Sun Life Broadcasting Network. We have a radio station in Wichita. Jim Hashbarger is the pastor. And I'll, let, me, let me just tell you a little bit his testimony before I tell you the story I want to tell. He, he had been raised in ministry. He was an associate pastor at one of the largest Assembly of God churches in Wichita, Kansas. But he, in his own heart and life, he recognized the problems, and he recognized that he did not know how to live for God. And one of his jobs as associate pastor was to deal with the congregation counseling and things. And he said they would come to him, and they would unburden their heart to him and ask him, what do I do to get victory? And he said, I didn't know. I did not know what to tell them to do. I would tell them, try harder. Read more, pray more, fast more. And he said, the whole time I'm saying it, I'm thinking to myself, I've done all of those things, and I still have bondages in my own life. And it's, he said it finally got to the point, he said, I can't be a hypocrite. And he walked away from the Lord. He walked out away from the Lord, went deep into sin. Years went by, and... One day, he, he was in the insurance business by now, and 
He picked up his son, and they were driving somewhere, and he said, Dad, did you know Brother Swaggart has a radio station in Wichita? He said, what? He said, yeah. And his son reached over and flipped over on the dial. And I've told you, you've heard me say this a thousand times, the testimony never changes. He said it was a little after 7 o'clock in the morning. Dad was teaching live the message of the cross. And he said, I heard the words, the answer you're seeking for victory in your life is found in the, cro in the cross of Christ and nowhere else. He said, you cannot justify yourself. He, he said, I remember expressively. He said, if you can't justify yourself, what makes you think you can sanctify yourself? He said, it's not your works, it's your faith in what Jesus Christ accomplished at Calvary's cross. He said, the power of God filled that car. He said, tears came to my eyes, and he said, I heard the answer that I had been seeking. And he said, I kept hearing, and I kept listening day after day. And finally, it brought me back to the Lord, refilled me with the Holy Spirit, brought me back into ministry, and he started a church. He's got a brand new building running well over 300 people preaching the message of the cross in Wichita, Kansas. And I was preaching there, and it was a Sunday morning, and his praise and worship team, he's got a wonderful praise and worship team. They're almost all family. I think it's three brothers and their wives. And the Lord was moving that Sunday morning during the praise and worship. And you've heard me talk about music before, how that music is the second greatest force for good in the work of God, second only to the preaching of the Word. If the music is right, if the music is anointed by the Holy Spirit, it prepares the hearts of people to receive the Word. If it is wrong, it causes confusion and conflicting spirits, and it hinders the Word of God going forth. And these, these, these brothers, they, they love the Lord and and. They were in the middle of praise and worship, and all of a sudden, the one brother that leads the worship, he stopped, and he said, I don't know why, but I just feel led to tell a story. He said, it was in the 1930s in the Republic of South Africa. I've been there 27 times to South Africa over the years. I love South Africa. And he said, there was a young teenage girl about 14 years old, who came down with a mysterious disease, and they didn't have, especially in South Africa in the early 1930s, they didn't have all the medical advancements that they had in America at that time. They didn't know what was wrong, but literally the inside of her body was being eaten away, the internal organs. They pronounced to her parents that she's going to die. She has a few days left. We're going to do our best to make her comfortable so that she can die in peace. But she was a Pentecostal girl. Went to a little Pentecostal church in that little town, and I don't remember the name of the town. And he said their youth pastor, if back then, if you wanted to call it then, when he heard the pronouncement of the doctors, he said, I don't accept that. I don't feel in my heart it's God's time for her to go. And he got on the phone and called a bunch of the young people, and they went up to the hospital, and, and she was in a, a segregated ward where there was supposed to be peace and quiet. And that youth pastor walked up to the head nurse and said, I want to bring my young people in, and we want to pray for her. They said, No. She's got to have quiet. She's dying. He wouldn't take no for an answer. He finally told her, lady, we're going into that room one way or the other. And so finally she said, well, just try to be quiet. And they gathered around her bed and they started praying. And they started laying hands on her and anointing her with oil and praying in tongues and worshiping the Lord. And the nurse would walk in and say, I said, be quiet. And they ignored her. 
They came back the second night. The nurse said, oh, not you again. They said, yes, we're back, and we're going to keep coming back. They went in. They, same thing, anointed her with oil, gathered around that bed, began to lay hands, began to pray for her. Then they left. The third night, they walked into that hospital. The nurse said, again? They walked into that room, and this time, they not only anointed her with oil and started praying, but somebody started singing. And I don't remember what they were singing, but whatever they were singing, the power of God fell. And they started singing, and they started worshiping, and the nurse stuck her head in the door to tell them to be quiet, and all of a sudden, the presence of the Lord came all over her. And then other nurses started coming. And then the doctor that was over her case came walking and said, what is going on? And he looked in, and he felt something that he had never felt before. And that nurse turned to the doctor and said, I'm so sorry. I've tried to stop them. But they, he said, never mind. Just let them. She's dying anyway. The fourth night, they came back. They laid hands on her, anointed her with oil, and she was unconscious the whole time. She never knew they were there. They got through praying. They left. And a few minutes later, the nurse walked in to check on her, and all of a sudden, her eyes opened. She looked around and said, I'm hungry. The nurse just stood there and said, what? And that young teenage girl said, I'm hungry. I want something to eat. She said, you don't need anything to eat. I need to get the doctor. She ran, called the doctor. He was at home, made him come to the hospital and said, she's awake. She's awake and she is strong. There's strength in her body. And the doctor said, you're crazy. She said, no, I'm not. Get your back end down here, and you can see for yourself. And he walked into that room, and she was sitting up and said, I want something to eat. I want something to eat. And he, 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 said, he said, he started calling people, running tests. And he said, he came back, he called the parents, and they rushed to the hospital. He said, I don't understand it. I don't understand it. I, she should be dead. She should be dead and in the ground. Here's the x-rays. You can see her organs are literally shrinking up and dying. She's dying from the inside. But we've just taken another x-ray, and her organs are perfect. <laughs> except, now this is what he said, except for one thing. And he looked at those parents, and he looked at that young lady, and he said, I hate to tell you this. I can't explain what's happened. I can't explain because it's a miracle. But he said, your female organs have been eaten away, and you will never be able to have children. And I'm telling you now to prepare yourself. You will never be able to have children children. And then he said, there's no point in even getting married. And then he stopped and said, that teenage girl was our mother. Come on, church. Come on, church. Come on, church. He said, she gave birth to three sons and two daughters without any fear. Let me tell you, we serve a God of miracles. We serve a God of the impossible. We serve a God that can heal every disease. He can meet every need. He can make the crooked path straight. He can push down Jericho walls. He can shut the mouth of a lion. He can turn a fiery furnace into an air-conditioned building. There is nothing impossible for our God. Hallelujah! 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 There's nothing 
too hard. There's nothing too hard. He can handle Pharaoh. He can handle Goliath. He can handle every problem in your heart and in your life. He can heal the sick. He can raise the dead. He can give sight back to the blind. He can make the cripple to walk. Oh, hallelujah. The problem with the modern church is we limit God. He's a big God. I said he's a big God. So ask big. Believe big. I would rather believe God for the universe. Do you hear me? I would rather believe God for the universe. What are you talking about? I'm talking about SBN. To cover the globe. I would rather believe God for everything than to believe him for nothing. Come on, church. Come on, church. We got too many Christians that don't believe anything anymore. But I want to tell you, this is a church that still believes in the power of God. This is a church that still believes in the miracle-working power of Jesus Christ. We still believe that on the third day, he stepped out of that grave in resurrection power, victorious over death, hell, and the grave. And if he can handle death, he can handle your problem. He can save your family. He can restore everything the enemy has taken from you. And I'm saying it right now. We're taking back every single thing the devil has stolen from us. I said we're taking it back. We're taking it back. We're taking it back. This is God's house. This is God's place. This is God's land. This is God's property. God gave it to us, and no man is going to take it from us. No devil in hell can have one centimeter of this property. Every piece of concrete belongs to God. Every speckle of dirt belongs to God. Every parking space belongs to God. Every tree belongs to God. Every blade of grass belongs to God. Every building on this property belongs to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's bigger. He's bigger. He's bigger than your sin. He's bigger than your sickness. He's bigger than your bondage. He's bigger than your problem. I don't mean to be repetitive, but I have to say, as I said last week in the book of Romans, verse 3, chapter 12, verse 3, the Holy Spirit speaking through the apostle said, and God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. Meaning the moment you got saved, not only did the Holy Spirit come to live inside of you, but deposited in you by the Lord himself was a measure of faith. Now, it is God's will, though, that that measure of faith grow. The problem we've got is we've got people that's been sitting on the same pew for 35 years and they still have the same amount of faith that they were saved with. And that's not the way it's supposed to be. We are to be growing daily in faith and in knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. But listen, two things. Number one, your faith cannot properly grow without a proper understanding of the victory Jesus won at Calvary's cross. In other words, you have to understand that at the atonement, 
on Calvary, Jesus Christ satisfied the debt of sin. He ransomed us out. He brought us out of the grip of the evil one. He paid the price that will never have to be paid again. Oh, hallelujah. When he said it is finished, he was atoning for every sin, past, present, and future. Meaning, and that statement, past, present, and future, is being so twisted today. But that statement, past, present, and future, means that it, his sacrifice on Calvary was a complete sacrifice that will never have to be undertaken again once and for all. Hallelujah. It does not mean that once you get saved and you sin, you don't have to ask God for forgiveness. We've got a lot of teaching like that. Oh, no, 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 no. He already paid for it. So once you get saved and you sin, you never have to ask the Lord to forgive you. That is the stupidest. Now, I don't mean to be unkind, but any Christian that would fall for that is the most ignorant person on the planet. Because, no, 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 listen to me. Think for a moment. That's the problem. Christians park their brains outside of the church. They use their brains every day to work, but when they come to church, they park their brain out in the parking lot. They leave it in the car. They get out of the car, and they... (laughs) And they accept anything that has Jesus attached to it. Now, just use common sense for a moment. Husbands, you all know I'm telling the truth on this one. I don't care how long you've been married. If you do something that offends your wife, you know without anybody telling you, you better say, I'm sorry. Or you ain't eating. You may be sleeping in another bedroom. Hello? As common sense, we know on the job, if we offend one of our workers, we have enough common sense to say, hey, I'm sorry. Am I right? Because you have enough common sense to know that if you don't make it right, the relationship is destroyed. Then why is it we understand that when it comes to more, more, mere mortals? But it's all right to sin against God and not ask for his forgiveness. How stupid can the church be? John writing in John chapter 1, my little children. And, and listen, that term, my little children, is exclusively reserved for children of God. It never refers to a sinner. He said, my little children, I write unto you that you sin not. But if you sin, and even in the Greek it says you're going to sin. We have all sinned and come short of the glory of God in the Greek. It says we have all sinned and are continually coming short of the glory of God because we're not yet in our glorified bodies. We still have some of the Adamic nature left there that wars against the divine nature that's inside of us. But he said, my little children, I write unto you that you sin not. But if you sin, we have an advocate with the Father who is the perpetuation of our sins. And not our, and not our sins only, but the sins of the world. He would say a few verses above that. Confess. If you will confess, the Lord is faithful and just to forgive us. And so don't misinterpret the Word of God. That's the problem. The church takes the Word of God further than the Holy Spirit intends. But you cannot really grow in faith without a proper understanding of the cross. The cross defines, in our understanding, it defines who we are in Christ. As Dad has said many times, the church doesn't know how saved they are, and the world doesn't know how lost they are. So you've got to have an understanding of the atonement. Secondly, faith cannot grow 
without conflict. Now, I wish I didn't have to say that. I wish that I could tell you there would never be another day of heartache, another day of tears, another day of questions. But we must understand that as children of God, nothing can happen to us unless God wills it or allows it. And he, and he I'll put it this way, Satan tempts. And the temptation he brings now, he'll bring that temptation against you in the form of a certain act. But that's not the real, the real temptation. The real temptation is to get you to step out of God's prescribed order. That's what the temptation against Christ in the wilderness was, to get the Lord to step out of God's will for his life. Satan tempts, but God tests. He will allow tests to come our way. I don't believe that, Donnie. Then you don't believe the book of Job. Just read the book of Job. Not only that, I'll take it further. You don't believe the Bible. You go to Faith's Hall of Fame in Hebrews 11, and every single one of them mentioned there, they had a trial, they had a test. And I don't mean one time, but over and over and over. And all of these tests are allowed to bring us to a place that we understand that we must exclusively depend upon Jesus Christ for every single thing. It is not I that liveth, but Christ that liveth in me. I can't do it but Jesus Christ can do it through me, and he will do it through me if I will get out of the way and let the Holy Spirit have his way. It must be tested. In verse 22, the Lord himself commanded his children, this is a command, have faith in God. In the Greek, the phrase actually states, have the faith of God. Now, notice the difference. It doesn't, in the Greek, it doesn't say have faith in God. It says have the faith of God. What do you mean by that? It shows us that the structure of the sentence, by the use of the word God, God is to be our object of faith. The Lord, Dad, he's tried to teach it since 1977. Jesus Christ must be the object of our faith. And the cross must be the so We understand that the cross is the source by which all the blessings that the Lord has for us comes. Everything we need to live has been given to us through what Jesus Christ did at Calvary's cross 2,000 years ago. Jesus Christ is the source. The cross is the means. You cannot separate the cross from Christ, and you cannot separate Christ from the cross. You cannot remove the cross from Christianity. If you do, you're left with the ramblings of philosophy and paganism just just recently I was told one of the superintendents of a state of one of the major Pentecostal denominations sent out an email to all the pastors of that state saying don't preach on sin on Sunday mornings don't preach on moral issues get this Last year in that same state, on the ballot was a, a, an amendment for the legalization of marijuana. Now, this baffles my mind. They had pastors in that denomination calling their district office to see what their stance was supposed to be. <laughs> Do these men not know how to read? They got the book right there. He sent an email back and he said, We're to tell, you're to tell your people to vote no, but this email is not to be disseminated or given out to anyone because we don't want them to know that as a denomination in this state we oppose the amendment because it may stop somebody from coming to one of our churches. God help us. God help us 
Listen, there would not be an empty seat in this church if we said it was all right to do whatever you want to do, which most churches do. But as long as we are here before the trumpet of God sounds, whoever's standing behind the pulpit, we're going to preach there's a right way and there's a wrong way. And if anybody doesn't like it, there's the door. They can leave and go find somebody else. We will not compromise the truth of God's Word. We are to be a moral, righteous, holy people. And I'm not talking about self-righteousness. I'm not talking about legalism. We're to love the sinner, but we're to hate the sin. God has chosen to operate his work from the basis of faith. In Hebrews 11.3, the Word of God says, Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the Word of God. He spoke it. So that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. That means that God's vast creation of worlds, planetary bodies, was created not by existing materials, but rather by the spoken Word of God. Now, do you understand that? There was nothing, and he spoke something into existence. And he did it on the basis of faith. God has faith in his word. So why don't we have faith? Oh, you're not here this morning. His word carries not only power, but his word carries creativity, and so does yours. If you know the will of God, we've not got a lot. No, we got a lot of people twisting the message of faith. They run around. They take the verse, speaking those things that are not, that be not as though they were. Well, you can do that if God has already told you to do it. But you can't go around speaking that if the Lord has not spoken it to you. That's not faith. That's presumption. And it will listen. It will not bring. A good return it will bring harm God spoke that to Abraham he told Abraham and Sarah you're going to have a child of your old age he was a hundred she was 90 I don't know about your math but my math says that's old but you've had people, especially in the Word of Faith camp, women that are 60 and 70 years old, walking around in maternity dresses confessing they're going to have a baby. No, they're not. Because the Lord has not spoken that to them. So they cannot speak those things which are not as though they were. However, for this ministry, God has called us to take SBN to the whole world Therefore, I can stand here and say and speak unto those things, those nations that we have not yet gone into. I can speak unto those things that be not as though they were because the Lord has already spoken it to this ministry. That's why I said a moment ago, I claim the universe. I claim every country. I claim every tribe. I claim every language. I claim every color of skin because God has spoken it. God insists that man accept everything done for him on the premise of faith. See, that's what messes people up. They want intellectual answers. God doesn't deal with the intellect. He deals with the heart. He deals with faith. That's the only, to use a crude term, that's the only currency that will spend in heaven is faith. Not your good works. Not your good deeds, not singing in the choir, not playing or singing in the band, not standing behind this pulpit, but faith. Faith in what? Faith in Jesus Christ and what he did at Calvary. That's what the word faith in the Bible always goes back. 
to the sacrificial atoning lamb that died on the cross. You cannot have faith without believing that Jesus Christ died on Calvary's cross. And it's sad to say you've got Pentecostal denominations and churches today that are removing any mention of the cross and any mention of the sacrifice because if you talk about the cross and the sacrifice, you've got to talk about sin because the cross is the only means of salvation, which means they have a church full of people that do not know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. He's the big Santa Claus in the sky. Hebrews 11.6 says, Without faith it is impossible to please him, for he who comes to God must believe, that means have faith, that he is able and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently speak, seek him. Now listen, if God can speak the word and create something out of nothing, then our faith in him can turn our nothing into something. Oh, did you, I, I got to read that again. I wrote that. I didn't get that from anybody. I wrote that. The Lord gave me that. I didn't get it out of anybody's commentary. I didn't get it out of anybody's book. I got it on my knees seeking the Lord when he spoke this, when I was preparing this message. He said, you tell them if I can speak the worlds into existence, if I can create something out of nothing, then tell them their faith in me can turn their nothing into something. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, I'm telling you, your faith can put food on the table. It can put clothes on your back. It can put gas in your car. It can bring your kids out of sin. What are you doing, Donnie? I'm running. I'm running a race. I'm running victorious. I'm not going to drag across that line. I'm going to run because I am victorious in Christ. My faith says I am an overcomer. My faith says I am victorious. My faith says Jesus paid it all. And I don't have to do anything except believe it and stand. When you've done all, stand. Devil, here I am. Here I'm standing. I'm not moving to the left. I'm not moving to the right. I'm standing on the Word of God. We were holding a revival in Kansas City when I was a little boy. And we were there for, I don't know, a month, six weeks. And one night when the service was over, Dad said, I felt, he said, told some people, I feel led of the Lord to pray for the sick. And if you got a need, I want you to come and stand. People started coming forward. In that group that came forward, he didn't know, Dad didn't know the people. But there was a young girl in college who had been raised in that church, saved, baptized in the Holy Spirit. But when she went to college, she came under the influence of atheistic professors and lost her way with God and became an atheist. Don't even know why she came that she never she had not been there any other service before and why she came down with everybody no one knows and dad was having them walk up and they would tell him what the need would be and he would lay hands on them and all of a sudden that girl walked up and stood there and dad said young lady what's your need and she just stood there looking at him She couldn't speak. Then all of a sudden, the gifts of the Spirit began to work in dead. And he looked at her and he said, you've lost your faith. You don't believe anymore. Now, I've been, we averaged 
When we traveled on the road doing church meetings, we averaged being in church 300 nights a year. And I never saw my dad do this before or after. He reached over and picked up the Word of God, the Bible, from the platform, from the podium, and he dropped it. He said, young lady, stand on it. She looked at him like he was crazy. Everybody looked at him like he was crazy. He said, I said, stand on it. And she walked over hesitantly. You could see the war. I'm a little kid sitting. I'm seeing it. I saw the war and the battle. And she picked up the first foot and put it on the Bible. Then slowly she picked up that second foot. And it was like that second foot was suspended in air. And finally, slowly she put it down. And the moment that second foot Touch the word of Almighty God. The power of God hit her, knocked her flat of her back, and she came up speaking in other tongues. I'm telling you, there's power in this word. I'm telling you, you can believe this word. I'm telling you that every word in the word of God is truth. Hallelujah. Oh, I got I gotta hurry. I gotta hurry. Verily I say unto you, this is the Lord speaking. He, and it, it, it's, it, I don't have time to go through it all, but in the Greek, it's not, it's, it, the idea is not, hey, hey, just come over here and listen to me. It is, the idea is, listen, I have something to tell you, something of great importance. Verily I say unto you, now I'm not Jesus, but I am called of Jesus. And this morning, I'm saying, verily, I say unto you, by television, in this sanctuary, by radio, by internet, whosoever, whosoever, that means if you just got saved five seconds ago, it means if you can't add two plus two, it doesn't matter the color of your skin, it doesn't matter what language you speak, he said, Verily I say unto you, whosoever God is no respecter of people shall say, shall say, what are you talking about now? This, that statement shall say gives us an inclination of how powerful that words are that are spoken in true faith. Now, do you understand that? Words that are spoken in true faith. In the early 80s, we were holding a crusade in one of the African countries. I don't remember which one it was, and 80,000 people in the stands. They told us before the service, he said, the, 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 the pastors and the missionaries, there will be thousands of demon-possessed people. Actually, they had set up two tents beside the stadium, and they had pastors in those tents. And during the services, you would see them hauling people out, demon-possessed. It was in Monrovia, Liberia. Thank you. Casting demon spirits out of them. Saturday night. I can't explain it. Well, let me go back. When we first landed, when we got off the airport, at the airport in Monrovia... And we got to the hotel we were staying at. They had a whole group of witch doctors blocking the door. Witch doctors with grotesque masks, cow dung smeared in their hair. And when they saw dad walking down the sidewalk, they were trying to put a spell on him. What did your daddy do? He just walked right in the middle of them and said, get out of the way. The, 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 the president of the country, because there was so much instability, he said, we will have members of the armed forces drive all of the team to the Crusades. And I got in the car, and Jim Ogg was with me, Gerald Ogg, I mean, we were going, it was that first night on Friday night, and, it, and I mean, it was a driver, and he had an Uzi machine gun beside him. That's not a comforting thought. <laughs> when you're going somewhere, and they got to carry a pistol and a machine gun. 
And we're driving, and the road was blocked by witch doctors. They had blocked the road. Man, he slammed on his brakes. And I said, go around them. No. No. I said, go around them. He said, no. They got powerful juju. That's the, the word for black magic. They started dancing around the car. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Have you ever watched? I don't know why people are scared of them. They're so stupid. We've got a dear sister from South Africa. She knows what I'm talking about. And I'm looking at this, and they had these weird, horrible masks, and I'm sitting there looking at my watch. And finally, I said, I'm tired of this. I rolled down my window. I said, hey, you. And one of them stopped. And I said, in the name of Jesus, get out of here and get away from this car right now. And I mean, it was like Moses parting the water. And I told that driver, go. And I mean, he floored it. But Saturday night, when we got to the service, I could sense in my spirit that something miraculous was going to happen. There are just some times you can walk into a church, you know God's going to move. And I mean, from the moment Thomas Sloan stepped out to begin the praise and worship, the Spirit of the Lord just hovered over that stadium, built by the Chinese. Dad started preaching that night, and he was preaching on the blood. And he was pacing up and down that platform, and all of a sudden, stage left. All of a sudden, people by the hundreds begin to bark like dogs, demon-possessed, so loud that you could hear them, and it was interrupting the service. And Dad was facing them. He said, he points it, in the name of Jesus, be quiet. And it settled down. And he started back preaching, and this time he had his back to them, and he was walking. And he was talking about how powerful the blood is. The blood of Jesus is greater than every sin. The blood of Jesus is greater than every disease. And all of a sudden, they started barking again, but this time, it was like somebody had given them a microphone. They literally began to drown Daddy out. They were barking and howling and hissing and making all sorts of noises. And Dad had his back to them. He was walking away. And all of a sudden, he stopped. He whirled around. And I've never seen. I looked at his face. I've never seen his face like that before. I saw the power of God all over him. He pointed back up there and said, I said, in the name of Jesus Christ, shut up, devil. Don't you speak through those people one more time. Be quiet. And I mean, all of a sudden, it was like giant hands came out of nowhere and pushed their mouth down. They had people telling me after that were sitting there, they said you could hear their teeth grinding as they were trying to open their mouth, but they couldn't. Why? Because he said, thou shalt say, he hit by the power of God, the word of almighty God. If you speak the word, there is power in the word of God. Oh, I got to hurry. Faith always speaks what the Word says. If you're speaking something contrary to the Word of God, it's not going to happen. I got to hurry. Sing as you come back. Upon this mountain. Now, he didn't mean a literal mountain. It's a metaphor. He used the word mountain as a metaphor to describe the fact that at times we have problems so big that they look like a mountain. But notice, he said, you shall say to the mountain. He didn't say, go get the preacher. He didn't say, call your favorite TV evangelist. He said, you shall say unto the mountain of problems in your life. Oh, come on, church. Come on, church. Be thou removed. You mean I can say that? If you are a born-again, blood-washed child of God, you have the authority to use the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. It is our right guaranteed to us by the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus. He said, in my name, you'll lay hands on the 
the sick and they shall recover. In my name you'll cast out demons. In my name, if you drink any deadly thing, it will not harm you. Be cast into the sea. Why did he say that? He meant that he not only removes the mountain, but he puts it in a place that it won't hurt anybody else. Did you, did you hear that? He removes that mountain, throws it into the sea, so it can't harm anyone else. Oh, man. Oh, hallelujah. And shall not doubt, and that's the problem, in his heart. The question to you today is, do you believe or do you not? Doubt is what stops 99.9% .9 of every believer of receiving the blessings of God. They just don't believe. Or they believe he'll do it for someone else, but he won't do it for me. I got news for you. When Jesus looks down, he doesn't see individual faces. He's looking at the heart. Hello? Hello? Oh, my God. But shall believe. Not only are we not to doubt, but we're to believe that the Lord can do what he says he can do. Amen. I believe in divine healing whether I get healed or not because it's not based on what happens to me. It's according to the word of God. I believe that my God shall supply all of my needs according to his riches and glory. I believe that my God is no respect of persons therefore you and I can come boldly before him in the throne room of grace in our time of need it, <clears throat> those things that speaks of our particular needs we sing a song bring all your needs to the altar what are you running around trying to tell me yeah, yeah, we all every church has them every church has people that they get into a financial problem, and instead of taking it to the Lord, they start dropping hints to the people, trying to suck money out of them. If you do that here, it's sayonara. <laughs> I was in the lobby after service one day, and this man walked up to him, never seen him before. He goes, oh, brother, what a great service. When they start out with all of this over the board praise, you know there's a catch. Oh, I've never felt it. Oh, it was, oh, 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 he just kept going on and on and on. And I'm just there looking and I'm waiting. I said, okay, come on, get to it. Get to it. Tell me what you want. And he goes, uh, you know, I'm just passing through town. And I said, I knew it then. He said, I'm trying to get to any name of the town. He said, and so I need bus fare. Would you give me the bus fare? I said, what church you go to there? Oh, I go to, uh, and he called the name of some church. And I said, what's your pastor's name? He goes, uh, um, um, uh, 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 um, well, um, well, let, well, uh, actually we've got a new pastor and, um, um, uh, I said, I said, that's all right. I, I can understand if he's new, you can forget. I reached in my pocket, pulled out the phone. I said, no, what city did you say? I said, I'll call the church right now. And he's going, you'll do what? I said, yeah, just, just, just give me the name of the church. I'll call it right now. They're still, they're just, they're, there'll be somebody there to answer the phone. And if they'll vouch for you, I said, I'll give you the money myself. He goes, well, 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 you know, they get out, you know, they don't, they, they, they get out, they, they're, they're, they get out. I said, you've told me that three times. <laughs> Finally, I told him, I said, brother, I'm not your bank. Oh, I got to instead believe God. I got, I'll, oh, I got, I got more. I'll stop with this. Brother R.W. Schambach told this standing right on this platform about a lady in one of his tent meetings, and she was in the prayer line. She came up to him. He said, honey, what's your need? And she said, I don't have any money. My car is broken down. 
It's at the garage. They told me how much it would cost to fix it, and I don't have the money. I need a miracle. He said, all right, let's pray. He laid hands on her, started praying. The next meeting, he was at another city just not far away. That lady showed up. He, she said, Brother Shambach, you're not going to believe this. That car that I had was a used car that I'd bought from a guy. And it, as I told you, it had broken down, and it was at the repair shop, and I couldn't, I didn't have any money. And you said, you prayed over me and said, you go tell them to fix it, and the money will be there. So I took your word. And I said, fix the car. She said, that afternoon, my phone rang. The manager said, you need to come down here. We found the problem. He said, we had to take your gas tank out because we figured there was a blockage. And we found it. We were right. There was a blockage. He said, and this was the blockage. And he opened a bag and it was full of cellophane $100 bills. Come to find out, the guy she had bought the car from was in the mafia. And he had forgotten that he had put some money in. Oh, ho, oh, 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 ho, oh, ho, oh, ho, oh. ho. If thou canst believe, if thou canst believe, if thou canst believe, oh, I got to everybody stand to your feet. I'm not through, but the Holy Spirit is through this morning. Have faith in God. Have faith in God. Don't have faith in me. I'm just a man who stumbles through this life just like you do. I'm no different. I don't know why God saw fit to call me to preach. But just because I'm standing here doesn't mean I'm more holy than you. That's a lot. We're all the same in Christ Jesus. And whatever the need is in your life, spiritual, physical, financial, domestic, emotional, as they begin to sing whatever they feel led, I want you to come around this front. And we're going to pray for your needs this morning. That goes for you by television. You can't be here in the flesh. But I want you to lift your hands in the air right where you are. And we're going to believe God for your needs. Come on, right now. Well, I'm standing, standing. Come on. Standing on the, the promises, promises of Christ, my, my King, through eternal ages, let His praises ring. Glory in the highest, I will shout and sing. Standing on the promises of God. Come on, sing it now. believe praise God and will not doubt in your heart you can have those things whatsoever you saith Jesus Jesus and let me end it with this but it must Jesus, be according Jesus. to the will of God praise the name of if Jesus. it's not in the word of God it's not the will of God Jesus, Jesus and if you feel in your heart a voice telling you to do something you better check and try the Spirit. There's been many a Christians whose lives have been shipwrecked because they thought they heard a word from the Lord. 
And they tried to act on it, and it wasn't God. And they caused great harm to themselves and to others around them. Number one, before we pray, whatever the Lord tells you to do, it's going to be backed up by the Word. Number two, it's not going to be beyond your realm. In other words, He's not going to call someone to preach that can't put two words together all the time. Sometimes He does. He's not going to call someone that didn't get out of grade school to be the president of a university. There's some common sense factors that we have to look at. We have to settle it in our heart that we've heard the Word of God, that it's His voice that makes the difference. And then once you've heard it, you lay hold on it. Now the Bible, it does, I didn't get to it, but the last point I was going to bring, the Lord does not promise when He'll answer it. That's part of believing. We don't know when, we don't know where, we don't know how, but we just believe it will. I want you to lift your hands right now. And that goes by you by television as well. Father, we come before you in the name yes, of your yes, son, yes, Jesus. Yes. We thank you for the promises of your word that are true. And this morning, we bring the needs of your people, not only in the sanctuary, but those that are watching by television, listening by radio, watching by internet. We join our faith together as touching that need, spiritual, physical, financial, domestic, emotional. You know exactly what the need is. And I'm asking, Lord, that faith would grow in their heart, that faith would grow in their life to believe you, to believe you, to believe that that mountain will be cast out into the sea and removed from their life. And we take authority over it in the name of Jesus. And, Lord, finally we bring the upcoming sheriff on before you. We take authority yes, yes, over every yes. hindering spirit that comes against the children of God that tells them that you will not bless them if they give. You said I will bless you in the city. I will bless you in the field. I will bless you the labor of your hands. I will bless you in your coming. I will bless you in your going. I will make you the head and not the tail. You said I will have the blessings chase you down and overtake you. We speak that as faith into the life of every person and we give you all the praise and glory and everybody said amen give the lord a hand and clap of praise six o'clock tonight we'll see you again king. We hope you were blessed and enjoyed this live service from Family Worship Center. Family Worship Center, located in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, at Jimmy Swaggart Ministries, holds three services weekly, Sunday at 10 a.m. and 6 p.m. Central Time, and Wednesday at 7 p.m. Central Time. All services are broadcast live on the Sun Life Broadcasting Network, including Sun Life Radio, online worldwide at sunlifetv.com, and on the free SBN app. 
To become a member of the Family Worship Center Media Church, call 1-800-288-8350 or join online at jsm.org. Live Family Worship Center services are produced by the Sun Life Broadcasting Network.